Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television here on City TV. On The Point of View, we get the right guests. We ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. We're interactive. Send us your thoughts. Tonight, we're focusing on the labor front. This is our first show since May Day. It's also our first show since Edo Fitro. So we wish all our viewers uh, Eid Mubarak, happy Edo Fitro. And we wish all our viewers also happy May Day celebration. My guest is the General Secretary of the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Anthony Alba. He's going to talk about everything from what's happening to the economy, the state of organized labor, the agitations on the ground, the statements they made on May Day, what the president's response was, and your own thoughts about the, the state of the labor unions and your own personal income as a worker. Stay with us. We'll be right back with our guest. Welcome back. So tonight we're talking about the state of workers in Ghana. At the May Day celebration on Monday, workers asked government to do a few things. They wanted government to reduce the taxes on petroleum products to ease the suffering of the citizens. The president says he can't do that. We don't have enough money. Now, the Trade Union Congress obviously is the largest labor center in Ghana with over 21 affiliates. We also have the Ghana Federation of Labor and then a third called the Labor Forum. Dr. Anthony Alba is the head of the TUC. So in a sense, you can say he's the head of organized labor. Doc, good evening. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. You are doing fine. You're, you're, you, you, you asked the president to, raise, to reduce fuel prices. Say hey, you can't do it. <laughs> you must be a very disappointed yeah. man. Uh, yeah, but I think the president was wrong. Mm. Uh, he was only looking at one aspect of it, the cost but he didn't consider the benefits. Mm. And so we continue to talk to him mm. and see and bring you know, to him that there must be some benefits that you are not looking at. So we will continue to talk. You've um, been talking about the fuel prices for a while. I have in front of me the yes. 21st March letter you wrote to the Minister of Finance titled DSS, Stabilization of Fuel Prices. You spoke about the increase in the prices and you suggested areas of cuts to the Minister of Finance, you copy to the Minister of Employment and Minister of Energy. Did you get a response to this letter from them? No, we didn't. Wow. Was that an open letter or a direct letter to them? It was that an open a, letter? It was a direct letter, and then we copied the press. And they did not respond? No. What arguments were you making in that letter? Just simple. Uh, we repeated that uh, uh, at the May Day and said, because of how fuel prices are increasing, mm. We want them to remove the taxes. Mm. And we worked out the taxes. It came to about 15%. Mm -hmm. And we thought that that would not uh, reduce the burden totally, but mm. at least it would do something. Mm. So when we, we wrote, we were expecting that we will, usually that's what happens. Even if they do not respond formally, they will call us to continue to talk about it and so on. But this time it didn't happen. And that is why we repeated it in the May Day address. You had also <coughs> proposed that because of the way inflation was behaving, you needed to have a new salary ne negotiation. Because I'm told there was a base pay negotiation in 2020 for 21 and 22. I think 4 and 7%. We negotiated in 2021 mm -hmm. for 2021 and 2022. 4% and 7% respectively. Yes, yes. And the minimum wage, 6% and 8% yes. respectively. And your argument was that what? They should... Our argument mm -hmm. is this, that at the time we were negotiating, mm -hmm. inflation was 9%. Mm -hmm. This was July 2021. Okay. In March 2022, inflation was 19.4%. Okay. Therefore, you can imagine mm -hmm. uh, the effect on real wages. Mm -hmm. And so... We were asking government to, you know, fill the gap, which is what we call in our terms COLA, cost of living allowance. Government and that was the cola. basis for asking for 20% COLA. And they said they won't do it. Uh, government has not said they won't do it. Uh, what they said they won't do is uh, removal of fuel, uh, taxes on the fuel products. Uh, according to President, if they do what we are asking them to do, government will lose $4 billion revenue 
And the point I made earlier was that, yes, you may think you are losing $4 billion, mm. but this is going to support the citizens of Ghana, especially the very, very uh, poor people mm. who survive on kerosene, for example, mm -hmm. for cooking and for provision of light. Mm. So if the person works one day and he gets 13.53 cities and he goes to buy fuel at 10.4 uh, a liter of petrol or kerosene, you, the person is spending 80% of the daily income mm. on kerosene, one liter of kerosene. Mm. And so we thought that if you reduce this burden by removing the... Don't consider the benefits aspect of it. But he only looked at the cost. So the engagement we are going to have, we are going to bring this to Some people think attention. you shot yourself in the foot in 2021 by even agreeing to 4% and 6% in the sense that if, as you said, inflation is already 9%. If you agree to a 4% and 6% salary increase, which is average of 5, this is still 4% below inflation. So in, in essence, you know that whatever workers will be paid in that year and this year will be eroded by at least 4%. So what uh, is the, no, why did you agree to that? Yeah, yeah, it's good you ask. Uh, inflation in July 2021... A year on year inflation. So that is from July 2000 up to 2000. 2020, 21. Yes. Yeah. And that was the 9%. Yeah. Now, when we were negotiating, Bank of Ghana always had a projection. And the projection is 6 plus or minus 2. So they expected that by the end year 2021, inflation will be below 8% or at 8%. And then when we were negotiating for 2022, we hadn't gotten the, the, the projection for 2022. But mm. the statistical service provided some preliminary mm. figures. That guided us. Nobody expected inflation to be 19% in March 2022. So when it hit, it means that we had to you know, call for. And because we had negotiated for the two years, the window left is for the president to use his executive powers, just as he did during COVID to increase health sector salary by 50%, I mean the allowances. So that's why we call him to use executive powers, to do, because the institutions have determined infl sorry, figures for 2021, 2022. Now, we are not calling the Public Services Joint Standing Negotiation Committee to go back to negotiate. We are asking government to use, uh, the president to use his executive powers to, to, to do that adjustment mm. as a kind of, uh, a way of dealing with the social cost. But, but doc, this, uh, within the time this increment was agreed, even different groups, there was a group calling itself <laughs> Coalition Against TUC and Organized Labor in favor of Ghanaian workers. They sort of saw this. They basically said that you should go back to the negotiation table because the 4% and 6 or 7% was not good enough. Now, my concern is how come they knew and yet you agreed, because you also have a full economist. You could also do your projections. Why are you using just the BOG or the statistical service projections? You are the people who have people on the ground as well. You could mm -hmm. have said, this 4% and 6%, you've locked yourself in for two years. Mm -hmm. So if we had listened to what these guys, some of, I think one guy is called Emmanuel Azubila mm -hmm. Abdul Salam. I remember what he said. They, yes. they, they said that this thing you had done was wrong. Now, yeah. I think they have been proven right. No, no, they haven't. You see, they didn't understand how uh, things work. Many of them didn't even know the difference between Public Services Joint Standing Negotiation Committee and the National Tripartite Committee. We engaged some of them. They didn't really know what was happening. Let me, let me say this here, that what we did was negotiation. TUC doesn't go there, or organized labor, we don't go there to dictate to government what government must do. Mm -hmm. We were all together as organized labor when the minister for finance came to present the, the state of affairs to us. And now uh, the initial suggestion mm. was that government was unable to increase salaries at all. Mm -hmm. They actually offered 0%. And now after some negotiations, we got 4% for uh, last year and 7% for this year. Now on top of that, we got the assurances and the guarantees that government was not going to declare any public sector worker redundant. So uh, 700,000 people kept their jobs. And that alone for us, as a union, the first thing we want, for, we want for our members is for them to keep their jobs. That is number one. So when government agreed, 
In fact, what we put on the table was that government should guarantee that until 2024, nobody will lose their jobs. Government said no. They can guarantee that for two years. The other thing is that government agreed that they will not reduce salaries. Of course, the salaries are already low. So if you go and reduce salaries further, then uh, you rather will be shooting yourself in the, in the foot. So we, we got that. We also put it on the table, and government agreed that every worker will have the job, the vaccination against COVID. Mm. Remember, things have eased now. So people might have forgotten that we were in a very, very bad time at the time. So it was important that we negotiate jobs first, and that became our priority. And so when people started talking about um, salaries and we got low rate of increase and so on, they had forgotten that you have to have your job first. But why did you, you do get paid two increase. years negotiation? Why didn't you just do for the year? Uh, there is a law in this country that, again, uh, many of those guys didn't understand. We have what we call the Public Financial Management Act, which uh, <clears throat> enjoins us to negotiate mm. at least one year before the payment. So... Because of COVID, we could not negotiate 2021 in 2020. Mm. So we waited until July 2021 to negotiate for 2021. At the time, the negotiation for 2022 had already lapsed because you are supposed to finish the negotiation in April. So because of that, government put it on the table and we agreed that because of all these emergencies, we couldn't agree, uh, we couldn't negotiate for 2022 before April, and now it's in July. So let's put the two together. And that makes sense to us. So you're basically saying those who said the 4% and 7% was too low did not understand the context that we were in. They didn't understand the conditions that made us accept the 4 and the 7%. Namely, one, that every worker will keep their job in the public service. For us, that was number one priority. Everybody was going to, and government was going to hire more people. That, again, government said, we are not going to freeze employment. We will continue to employ. And our, uh, uh, our children who have graduated also should have spaces. So we agreed that. And then government also said that they are going to make sure that every worker will have the vaccination for COVID. So all those monies, we, government needed to ring fence to be able to you know, do all that. And then the last one was that uh, we put that on the table that government has been delaying the payment of our social security contribution. And government also promised... But, but aren't, you aren't, you surprised, sorry, like aren't you surprised at the level of deterioration of the fiscal space in addition to the high cost of living that have happened at the same time? So, yes, inflation, your projection, projection of BOG and all of those was plus or minus two. That no, was it was not our projection. It is Bank of Ghana's projection. Enough. The inflation is now effectively at 20%. Exactly. We couldn't have anticipated that. But government's physical tightness is also quite mind-boggling in the sense that all of a sudden there's no money for anything. <coughs> have you asked the government, for example, to explain why all of a sudden it's so broke? People have asked that. No, they, but they, but they, the president they, explained this yesterday. I mean, uh, on May. And you agree with his explanation? No, you don't have to agree. Have they, been a, have they audited, for example, the COVID, ex COVID expenditure? Because there are a lot of people who feel that you know, a I lot think, of. I think you are putting no, too no, many no, questions no, let me, at let me, the same no, time. No, let me, let, me let me ask my question. Please, I'm saying ask that the question, yeah. there is a view that the deterioration of the physical situation is too alarming, mm -hmm. not explained enough by some of the points raised. So some people are asking, for example, that the COVID expenditure, we got money from the World Bank, billion. should be audited to see what actually it was spent for. And I'm asking whether the TUC is interested in that. Anyway, that's, a, that's another question. But the point I'm making is this. Because of COVID, mm. government is saying that they have spent 13 point something billion, which they didn't expect to spend. Mm -hmm. Then, in addition, they have spent about 14 point something billion, which mm -hmm. they didn't expect. So it has created a deficit of 27 billion. That's huge. That is huge. Now, how to now try to deal with this? And that is what is feeding into the inflation. That is what is forcing the city to lose its value at such a rapid rate. All this together. I mean, you know this. The deficit is huge. How do you finance that? Government financing through borrowing and so on. So what government has to do is to cut some of the expenditure. Unfortunately, any time this happens, they jump onto uh, uh, salaries. Either they freeze it or mm. they cut it. Now, what they did in 2014, when we were in serious economic trouble, was what? Mm. Government decided that they would not increase salaries. Zero percent. What they did was to offer 10% COLA. 
In 2015, when they were adjusting pay, they took the 10% out and gave 13%. The difference was just 3%. Mm. But, you know, people seem to forget very quickly. This is what happened in 2014, when we were in serious crisis economically. This is what has happened because of COVID. So we need to work with government to deal with this. Our approach was that, okay, when you are negotiating with a partner, which is not a, mm. a sport partner, it's a long-term partnership, and they are saying that these are the issues. In 2014, we agreed to zero increase in salary and got a cola of 10%. Mm. But we learned our lesson. Because if you get cola, you do not gain anything on your social security. So we decided mm. this time we will not do that. Every little increase helps to bring the, the level up so that when you negotiate again, you already have a gain. And that was why we accepted 4% and 7%. I, I just wanted, to go, go down I, I just wanted to go, go back all. to the issue of the physical problem and inflation. Yeah. I, I think that we have to disaggregate the inflation. Because, for example, government says they've spent 13 billion and 14 billion. Mm -hmm. That's 27 billion. Yeah. I'm going back to the issue of that needing to be audited because you've just said that, well, that could have contributed to inflation. Now, that suggests that the inflation we have is a demand pool inflation, which may not necessarily be true because if you look at what the central bank governor announced last month in March, his policies were interest rate policies, trying to cool down the speed at which money was growing. But inflation kept going up. That suggests to me that some of the inflation is cost issues, cost push. Cost push yeah. Yeah, so I am saying, and there are people who feel that the claim government made about its expenditures doesn't necessarily explain our fiscal situation. Some people think they wasted money, right? And they feel that there should be an audit of that. The second side is, if it was truly a demand pool inflation, the monetary issues the central bank did would have worked. But clearly they haven't. So but it's these two things, they no. reinforce each other. I mm. mean, they reinforce each other. When this gets to a certain point, the other comes here, and when this gets mm. to a certain point, so they reinforce each other. Mm. The situation is that we have inflation on our hand. Mm. We have a deficit on our hand. Mm. How do we move forward, making sure we get uh, this resolved and workers' incomes are protected mm. and their jobs are also protected? These are important things, and we find ourselves in this crisis. How do we get there? You are making a point about audit. Okay, assuming they audit and they say they, they misspent or they misapplied funds and so on, or they, they did the right thing. What is going to happen to inflation because of that? But we if, are not against audit. If somebody, audit if somebody something... spends 27 billion CDs to soften people's challenges in an economy and, be, and people are still struggling, you need to know how that money was spent. No, no, no. I mean, the government was quite clear how the money was spent. There is COVID-related expenses. Mm. The COVID-related expenses. I agree if we ask them to audit. As for audit, that's the job of the Auditor General. They'll do it. I mean, uh, we don't have to call the Auditor General to go and audit. That is his job. He has to audit. But my point is that, assuming they audit and they say everything is fine or things went wrong, mm. what has that got to do with the level of inflation? We have this on our hand. We have to deal with it. Mm. Workers' incomes have been eroded. How do we deal with it? And at the same time, provide opportunities for our young people to also get jobs. Government has a role to play. We also have a role to play. And the idea is that as partners, employers, government, and labor, we have to work together to find solutions, homegrown solutions to these problems. Mm. Is it fair to say that the agreement in the Code Declaration after the National Labor Conference sorts of strengthened the government's hand to say no to you? Because you all have signed a, yes. a letter here where organized labor and employers say they will work together, and I'll emphasize a couple of points, that government should embark, to continue to embark on its fiscal consolidation plan, right? And that ultimately the creation of the fiscal space from this thing will achieve that sustainability and translate to universal gain for Ghanaians. Now, you also agree that government should take pragmatic steps to address issues related to influx of cheap goods, fair enough. And then you, you talk about government achieving a balance between meeting the demands of labor without compromising macroeconomic stability. A lot of the commitments here suggest that the president can say, guys, you already signed that I should do what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So you can't turn around and come and tell me that I should use executive power to reduce fuel prices or increase your salary because on first March, after you met in Inquita, you all agree that I should go through the fiscal consolidation. 
Yeah, but that doesn't also mean that the government doesn't have to do what they have to do. Uh, remember, we were three partners there mm -hmm. at Co. Mm -hmm. Organized labor, mm. private sector employers, and government. So this document that you are referring to yeah. is the outcome of what we agreed mm -hmm. uh, as partners there. Mm -hmm. And so if you go down uh, in that document, you will see where the views of organized labor is also reflected. First, that government should agree that we review the single spy. You know, it, during this time okay. that things are hard, if you manage to push there that government should agree that we review the single spy, it's an achievement. And that has uh, started. We already have appointed uh, technical people who are mm. going to help advise us on what to do with the single spy. And we are drawing the attention to the fact that salaries for especially those on single spy mm. are very, very low. And they have lost their values especially to, since 2013. Therefore, they are going to pay more attention to this kind of things. And if indeed we manage to get only this, it means that 700,000 people are going to benefit from this review. That alone is some achievement, I think. And you don't expect that uh, <laughs> labor, labor will get everything. Of course, the employers will get something. So, so the if most important through, issue in that document from the labor side was the single spine review? Not only that, we also agree that mm -hmm. some, as I speak to you, mm. a number of public sector workers don't even have conditions of service. Okay. They're rating conditions of service. Uh -huh. So if you go down that document, mm. we are asking that every public sector worker must have conditions of service mm. uh, so that we know exactly what we are demanding mm. and that is documented. So we, we got something. Except that in a document of three partners, you are likely to get something so for government, if I, to something for this, labor, so to something for employers. So to understand this, I should see the emphasis on what government wanted, what you wanted, exactly. what private sector wanted. I shouldn't take it all together. You can take all because I'm asking because I see some things which are quite interesting. Yeah. Point four, social partners should support government to create more decent jobs, particularly for the youth, which is exactly. great. Exactly. Wait, but through the implementation of programs like 10 billion uh, Ghana CD U Start, U -start yes. and stuff like this. Government, and this is plural, government yeah. track record in job creation programs have been abysmal. You are right. So I'm surprised that anybody will agree for government to say they are going to create any job for anybody. But that, that if government, <laughs> government has thought about creating jobs, yeah. even if it's one job, we in labor, we will never kick against it. Well, my view is that they, 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 I'm not saying they shouldn't create a job. They always mismanage job creation programs. They never work. I agree with so you. So if, if somebody has done uh, NYEP, JIDA, yeah, Let's yeah, Dep, yeah, and all these things, yeah, yeah. why should we give the person 10 billion to create any job? When the person, <laughs> government's job is not to create jobs using God. I mean, look at NAPO. Bernard, can you imagine organized labor telling government that we don't agree to your job creation initiative? No, that's what I'm saying. I, I always give this example. If you look at what freeing up the telco space with Momo has done for job creation, MTM mobile money agents, what mm. for mobile money mm. agents, mm. that wasn't a government job creation program. Mm. I can list over 50,000 people who have been employed by that. Mm -hmm. If government tells you I'm going to create 50,000 jobs, why are the people who, who, who those jobs were created for? No, you see, uh, maybe you are missing a point. The, the thing is this. Mm. Government can create direct jobs mm -hmm. in government, like what mm -hmm. they did recently, 11,480 okay. in the security agencies. That is direct. Mm -hmm. 100,000, uh, how do they call the young guys who are employed in this program. NAPCO. NAPCO or NYEP or whatever it is. These are direct jobs. But the main duty of government is to create an environment so that the private sector will create sustainable, decent jobs. And so if government says that, for example, I'll just give one example. Mm -hmm. Government does its analysis and says that our free trade policy mm. is denying us a lot of jobs. Mm. Therefore, we are going to restrict trade. And that's the point that the employers were making, which was captured. Yes. That we should not uh, encourage the importation Cheap of... Cheap imports. Uh, exactly. That alone can employ a lot of people. So mm. you, you have to see from that angle that the work of government or the duty of government is to create an enabling environment for jobs to be created. That is number one. Not necessarily government creating direct jobs. But if the private sector is unable to provide those jobs, mm. government, there's nothing that stops government from coming. They, they track record that they usually waste that money. I can, <laughs> then, and and there's, no, uh, there's no evidence that any so-called government job creation program has since worked. record started has worked. Anyway, this is the point of view. Our guest is Dr. Anthony Abba. <laughs> Incidentally, he's an economist, so he was uh, 
he joined the TUC as a research guy in the early 90s, rose through the ranks, did his master's and PhD, set up the research and policy unit, became deputy general secretary, is now an economist <laughs> general secretary, which is why we're focusing a lot on the economy, because he tends to talk about that. Um, we'll, we'll come back and discuss a few other things. So I have in my hand the Daily Graphics extract on World Labor Day. I saw a lot of interesting comments from different parts of organized labor. How strong is organized labor? How united are they? That's another question. And also, it looks like the economy, things may get tougher before they get better. What is this assurance to workers of Ghana? We'll be right back. Welcome back. Tonight on The Point of View, my guest is Dr. Anthony Alba. He's the General Secretary of the TUC. As I said, the TUC is the largest of all the... Uh, they, they call them labor centers now. So there are about Sorry. 21 or so. Uh, cocoa research workers, communication workers, quite a lot of them. Then there's also um, Ghana Federation of Labor. And then there's a new group. Now, Doc, I, I have a feeling that organized labor is divided. And I'll give you two examples. So, yes, mm -hmm. under you, we have 21 now 22, yeah. 22. Then yeah. under the Ghana Federation of Labor, Abraham Kunsin and Co., they are 13. Mm -hmm. Then now there's something called the Forum. Clocksack, Nagrat, Nat, GRNA. These guys are about nine. Clocksack, in fact, if you guys have the video of Clocksack, Isaac Bampoado, you can play it. Because last week he says they will take their uh, neutrality allowance and they're not going to take part in World Labor Day. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, maybe I'll play that video shortly. Then I'll, I'll take your comment. He says, they don't trust you guys. They're not going to join you to do any <laughs> labor, anything. So please show me that video. Then I'll, I'll come back in and ask him a couple of questions. You had finance ministry there represented by Abina, the deputy minister of finance, with his technical people. Fair Wages and Salaries Commission were there. They brought two lawyers, two lawyers, plus their technical team. Employment was there. And of course, Clossack was there, led by my good self. Now, so if you people are saying that we have outwitted and played the first one on them, it's negotiation. Then we should be congratulated for doing a good job. Because that's what negotiation is all about. And mind you, this neutrality allowance that, that is only a minute part of our broader conditions of service. There are more goodies that we've already finished about 80%. We don't do double work. We've got to justify at the receiving table and then some people are asking questions. We don't do double work. Me, I don't do double work. If you want to do double work, you can go and do double work. But we, we don't do double work. We've justified whatever allowances that we've been given at the negotiating table. It is signed and sealed. Signed and sealed. So if you don't understand, what? Go and sleep. Go and sleep. Go and sleep. Agbeda. 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 The civil and local government staff was closer. Ghana regrets that due to the recent unfortunate developments on the labor front, we are unable to collaborate with the TUC Ghana in the celebration of this year's May Day. The association will independently organize activities in all the 16 regions of the country, not the 10 regions, in commemoration of this important landmark in the annals of workers' struggle. Where the TUC went to hide and sign it, they are the only people who can answer this question. They are poisonous. In fact, TUC is poisonous. And this is not the first time. When it came to pensions, they kick against pensions. They are still kicking against a three-tier pension. What's wrong? They are poisonous. That's why we don't want to associate ourselves with them again. They are poisonous. We don't want them to con contaminate us. No, 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 no. They are poisonous. They are poisonous. That's the answer. So Isaac Bampado doesn't trust you, and he's the head of Clocksack. Mm -hmm. that, that's serious. What's going on? Yeah, I think you have to ask Isaac. Uh, 
I, 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 he, I didn't say that. He said it. So at appropriate time, ask him why he doesn't trust me. But you see, the fact that we have three centers doesn't mean we are not united. Mm. In Togo, do you know the number of centers in Togo? Tell me. And now I think they are about seven. If you go to Congo, do you know the number of trade union centers? Over 400. Serious? I'm telling you. Now, just <laughs> compare them with churches. They are all saying they want to go to God. Mm -hmm. How many churches do we have in, 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 in the world? 30,000 of them. Church brands. Yes. So it doesn't mean they are not together. They are together in the, the, the principles. We all agree on the issue of protection of income and jobs. I don't think it's fair for anyone to think that any organized labor group will be against protecting jobs and incomes. Mm. Of course, the way we, we, we do things may be different from one to the other. Uh -huh. Just as the churches, they are all hailing God, but you know, the Anglicans, you know, they, they worship in a certain way, the Catholics worship in a certain way. But that doesn't mean that when it comes to the main of God. In this same vein, mm -hmm. we organized labor groups are together. And I can tell you that, yes, I, I read and, and heard what uh, Isaac said about they not joining uh, May Day and so on. Mm -hmm. But you'd be surprised that at the reception, Isaac came there. Isaac oh. Bumpo Aldo was there. He came to the reception. He came to the reception. On May Day. And let me tell you, Cossack oh. was among the first to pay their contribution towards the celebration of May Day. Are you serious? Therefore, me, I don't understand. So the point that <laughs> the point that he was making is oh. not against uh, organized labor calling for protection of incomes and jobs. No, the point is that we might have, or I personally might have done something that he didn't like, and instead of dealing with it like in-house issue, he went out there and addressed the. Could it be? And then could it he be gave the, that wrong it, impression that we are not together. Uh, but let me tell you, we are together, and when the time comes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the questions will follow. What we will do, mm -hmm. you will see that we are together. Yeah. I'm asking because two things. When the initial 4 and 7% was agreed, you, it was both you and him that... We all came yeah. together. Good. All the, all, the, all the organized labor groups were together in the negotiation. I was there. as Igbon Pardo was there. When we all agreed, was, was he GFL, signed was GFL and I signed. Also there? GFL was there for the minimum wage, but they are not part, part of, of this plan. plan. I so see. I signed the agreement. as Igbon Pardo also signed the 4% and the 7%. Well, uh, there, there's a story here as well, Timothy Nyangbe's story on the same publication where Abraham Kunzin edges unity. And if let me just read a paragraph. Mm. He observed that the deepening of disunity among the labor unions had reduced the May Day to a mere fanfare event that had little significance for workers. Quote, every year we gather to celebrate May Day. There are lots of flowery speeches but these speeches fall on the rocks and there's no result. It has been reduced to a platform where politicians come to make promises to workers. And he continues on page 12. And he basically says, knowing that the... Just give me a second. Without fulfilling them, most workers do not even understand the history of the May Day celebration and just take delight in socializing and making merry. This is quite damning. Yeah, your, your but colleague. he's entitled to his views. I mean, if this is how he views May Day, it's for me very unfortunate. I expect a union leader to hail May Day. May Day is a special day. Let me tell you, it is a day that all the hearts of not only those workers in Ghana, mm. but all the hearts of workers across the world are put together. And I, as I always say, if you put together, the heart is among the softest parts of the body. But if you put a number of them together the way we do on May Day, even bulldozers cannot crush it. So let us move from this kind of apprehension as labor leaders and let people know that we are together. I would not believe that any union leader will go against protecting incomes. And Maybe I'm misquoting him because he was saying that he was actually calling for unity, but he's saying that the May Day celebration has been reduced to a mere... No, but that is his view. If it's exactly that is what he said. Because I always don't rely on newspaper reports no, no, uh, but they quote, they quote, it's a quote, they yeah, even said, you see, the, he, I, see I have, they quote seen, his words. I've seen many things that they have misquoted me. They have put in quotes, but that's not what but I But these said. views, about, but, but these views, Mr. Kumsin has expressed, are not new. I've heard him con talk about the way 
It's like we do window dressing. And his point is that you guys must re, re, reunite. Come together. Yes. I, I don't know whether it may be the way, but are you, are you, do you not agree that there is a need for unity in the sense that in some countries, it, uh, yes. give, me, give me a second. For example, there are a lot of people who feel that where the economy is now and where Ghana is, if you look at the history of our trade unions, you guys are so powerful. Go to South Africa. Kosatu is a key member of the ANC. The Labour Party came out of workers. They feel that one of the vanguard of protecting the vulnerable should be workers. But it looks like that this unity, the self-interest, has really reduced the labor front, which I think is what he was trying to say. I don't know what you, you think about you. Whether you agree that the, the fortunes of organized labor are, you are per, underperforming collectively based on the fact that you are all educated, you are many, you have a certain view, a lot of the things you support go for the vulnerable. Mm -hmm. So l organized labor in Ghana should be more powerful than it is. But a lot of people feel that's what not the case. What do you more powerful? I mean, you see... They shouldn't be begging presidents to say, give me cola, <laughs> presidents, I will give you, and they'll say, oh, we beg. No, they should be... They, because I don't think if Kosatu says they will not take a position in terms of how mine workers are treated, I don't think Ramaphosa can get up and say, well, I'm not going to give you because they, they, are, they are considered... They are considered more witty in that, what they that, say. That's what you think. You see, you alluded to a number of things. Mm -hmm. In the 60s, mm -hmm. when we were fighting for independence, yeah. the TUC supported that struggle. Yep. That gave some power to the TUC. Mm. TUC was very much part of CPP. Mm -hmm. Then ANC and COSATU, they are like this. They have some partnership going on. Mm -hmm. In 1992, TUC decided that we would not have that strong alliance with any political party. And so we are neutral uh, mm. in the way we do things with government. Mm. So we resort to talking and dialogue and so on. Mm -hmm. We have been doing this I'm under my leadership at least in the last six years. I decided to prioritize dialogue and mm. I got my colleagues to support me. We have been dialoguing for six years and now the results are not there to show. That is why the anger? That is why some people came out to say, this is not working, let's change it. And this is the signal that I gave on May Day and uh, uh, two or three days before to let government know that if they don't listen to us through the dialogue, we will do what trade unions do. And I can tell you on that, all the unions, including Clocksack, are together. If government doesn't change this way of doing things in terms of protecting incomes and uh, jobs, uh, things will happen. Mm. And I can tell you, when that time comes, we'll be together. So you are saying that this <coughs> proposal you made for the wages to be reviewed in relation to inflation, we've not had the last of it. The fact that the president says it's $4 billion, we can't do it. No, that's it's not the last. Oh, that's different. That's about fuel. The, okay, that's we different. We're talking about fuel prices. But you are talking about in generally. We're so, talking so, about things that go directly to workers. Mm -hmm. Reviewing the single spine uh -huh. and making sure our incomes are protected. Okay. If inflation keeps going, mm -hmm. it will come to the point where we cannot take it anymore. Now mm. we are asking for twenty percent mm. cola. Mm. Especially when we were negotiating and the inflation was nine percent, we got four for ten, four percent, seven percent. What I'm saying is that if inflation keeps going and it's not arrested and it gets to say 30%, 40%, as it did in the 90s, it will come to a point where we will, be, we will not be able to take it anymore. Mm. And that will start serious labor unrest in this country, which will not be good for us. And I hope that government will engage us as they promised mm. between now and, the, and July, where we expect the technical report to be ready. Mm. So that all the concerns we have raised. So if inflation keeps rising, we will continue to and ask cost of living cola. doesn't improve, and there's no cola. The the position has to change. It will lead to serious labor unrest in this country. I can and tell you me. are saying all the unions are together on that. All the centers. Everybody is with me on this. I'm asking this because I listened to Kenneth. Kenneth Kumsin was on a question of law last week. I just mm. wanted to play a quick excerpt. Mm -hmm. At the end of the interview, he sounded as though there was pressure on leadership of the labor unions. He was basically even saying, look, I, have, I don't support any party, 
Nobody has given me anything. Yeah. But we are being threatened. Sometimes we have to, we can't sleep. Just please play that <laughs> voice cue for me. I just wanted him to comment on it. The briefly. pressure is from our, our members. Yes. yes. So I, I wanted them to show, yes. show that for me, if you can get it. If I tell my kids yeah. that there's no money at home, yeah. and I like for us to relate, yeah. the children are only able to measure yeah. by my expenditure pattern, okay. my conduct, okay. behavior. Okay. That's the only true measure. That they will, they will now believe that but it's true. But if they see me at some <laughs> sports, <laughs> with friends, <laughs> with some <laughs> bottles, but they, say, but they say it's true. <laughs> <pop. laughs> my, friends, my friends who are spending their money. <laughs> so, 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 so <laughs> even if it's your friend, it means you have identified yourself yeah. with a certain class yeah. for which you recognize mm. that is good. Mm. So what we are saying, government must just demonstrate by example so that we are not heckled as leaders of workers. Mm. We are not threatened, because last year there were litany of threats wow. over the 4%, which the following week, Article 71 office holders announced a 70% 70%. pay rise. So the conclusion was that these guys have been bought. Yeah. Nobody buys me, not NDC, NPP. My loyalty is to the people. Mm. If anybody has... has Give me any money, come and say it or show it. Mm. So what I'm saying is that by virtue of the decisions and the profligate expenditure that we see, communicate a certain impression to mm. the ordinary person mm. that we are being short in. Mm. And the leaders of the workers become the target. So it's simple. Let's provide leadership. And we will all build a country that tomorrow all of us can be happy. But if until that happens, the pressure will keep mounting, mm. we will not sleep in our homes, we will be hiding in places, <laughs> and that will not be good for us. That is for which reason we speak with that, this level of passion. Yeah. It's not because it's about CPP, MPP. We don't give a flying figure about any political party in office. <laughs> our concern is that a country built by Ghanaian workers mm. ought or needs to be compensated in a manner that they can continue to contribute their best mm. for economic development. That so that was Kenneth Kumsen. Yes, and I like it. I really do, you know, because all what he has said is to support what I have, I have the point I'm making all this why, that <clears throat> after the negotiation of salaries for 2021-2022, the backlash was mm. for all of us to see mm. that there must be change in approach. Mm. I made a statement that our partners have been listening to us for six years, but they are not hearing us. And so we have to do something to make them hear us. Mm. Now, do you know why workers withdraw their services? It's not because they don't want the job. The reason workers withdraw services, which we call strike, is because we want the employers to know the value of the service. So sometimes some, some workers will say, we want to go on strike for a day, just a day or two days. It's not because they don't want the job. It's not because they want to leave the job. It's because they want... In this world, people, if you have something, you don't value it. It's only when they, they take it away from you. So when the services are withdrawn, employers now come to the table and they see the value of the services that we are provided. You know, the president made a point about spending 30 point something billion on 700,000 workers out of 56 yes. billion yes. Uh, uh, revenue. Anytime I hear this, I feel very sad because... Mm. It is as if they are paying some unemployment benefit to the workers. <laughs> this is the cost of the services that we are providing. Mm. All the nurses, all the midwives, all the doctors, all the teachers, all the public service workers, 700,000 of them. The, the service they provide is the cost. That is the wage. So if you, 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 you see this as if... Some, this, it's some, like they are, some, they are some gift. Yeah, it's like we are 30 million. It's a bit demeaning for yeah. workers to feel this. We are 30 million. And out of 56 billion that we collected in revenue, we gave 30 billion to workers. <laughs> As if it's, it's just a gift. So <laughs> what is happening is that you are paying for services. Mm. Just sit one day without the service of the police, mm. without the service of the health workers. Mm. It's the service you are paying for. Mm. And let me tell you, mm. what they are paying for the service of this country is too low. Mm. It's very, very low. Mm. Now, when I hear things like that, what comes to my mind is that you are not collecting what you should collect. Why should Ghana, this country, collect 56 billion in taxes? 
It's because there's something that government has to do they are not doing. And then when they turn around and say they are paying about half of that to you, it's what almost like mean? throwing the blame on exactly. you. Exactly. When the, the size of the it's kettle... It's like we are taking more than we deserve. Mm. But can you imagine that we are not providing the services that we are providing the public service for the people of Ghana? It Just for one day. It would be interesting to show me, relative to other places, the level of salary Ghanaian government workers earn, and compared to other places to, to, to see. We'll be right back. Uh, Dr. Ba, he doesn't <laughs> want to say they will strike, but he's saying that Charlie, if something doesn't happen, something will happen. <laughs> we'll get behind that something when we come back. This is the point of view. We're talking to the General Secretary of the TUC on the state of Ghanaian workers. A couple of days after May Day, send us your comments. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Point of View. My guest is Dr. Anthony Alba, who is the Secretary General. He's different from General Secretary. So Secretary General is an executive leader. General Secretary is not the same of the TUC. And um, so you've raised a lot of issues. Yes. You, you agree with Kenneth Coomson? There's pressure. Is, is there pressure on leadership? There's a lot of pressure on us. What, what are the workers saying? A lot of things. You know what I did? Mm. After the negotiation in 2021, Mm. I decided to go to all the regions in this country. I just ended in March okay. to meet the uh, what we call regional councils. And the regional council is made up of representatives from all the districts. And I met, I went to all the regions. And I got a message that, Mr. Secretary General, things are not good for us. We know your approach of social partnership, social dialogue, but it's not working. <laughs> And we have to change it. Wow. And they elected me Secretary mm. General. Mm. And I have to listen to them. So there will be a huge change. And I already signaled this. First before in the pre-May Day forum and also at May Day. And in my informal interactions with government and the authority. That things must happen. The point Ken was making was that if you say you don't have money, it must show. But if things you do show that you have money... Workers who deserve so much are not getting so you much. You guys seem upset with the SOE, particularly for how much they are paid, the CEOs, yes. compared to how much they make. And then I think he also wrote in Article 71. I'm told that somebody said this Article 71 people are paid less than 1% of tax revenue. Yes, so yes. What's the, the president made that point. So, like, what's the big deal? But you see, let me tell you what. The income issues we raised were mm. two. Mm. One is that salaries in the public service especially, mm. are too low. So mm. it's the level issue. The second aspect has to do with inequity. When people take their salary, they don't only look at what they take. They look at what others also take. And that is the source of motivation or demotivation. So if I'm a senior person in a certain public service institution, and I'm a, I am receiving less than what a junior person is receiving in another sector of the public service is very demotivating. And that is the point we are making, that if you are a state-owned enterprise and you are making losses, there's no reason why you should receive so much salary compared to people in other services in the public service. Even to the extent that the president who is actually managing the whole economy, you managing a subsector, you are receiving higher salary when you are making losses for taxpayers to go and pay. It is not right. If you are making good profit and paying dividend to government, there's no reason why you should come and attack your salaries. Because probably it is that high salary which is motivating your workers to be able to produce so you can pay dividend. But not when you are making losses. So the issues we raised on May Day are one, incomes. Two aspects. One is the level, and that must be addressed. Mm -hmm. The other aspect is the relativities, the inequities. That must be addressed. On the issue of employment, we raised an issue about job creation, especially for young people. This is very important. But the other aspect of job creation has to do with protecting the decent jobs that we already have. Out of the nearly 11.5 million Ghanaians who are above 15 years, who are eligible to enter the labor market, as you know, under 2 million are doing some form of decent work in Ghana 
It is not right. It's really bad. It is not right. So, as you said, they've been listening, but they are not hearing. Yeah. So we can end with what Christ said. Let he who has an ear hear what organized labor is saying. Thank you. You said it better <laughs> than I did. So, so, I think we'll leave it there. If, if you have an ear here, labor is not happy. They want labor issues, salary levels, salary relativities, and job creation to be addressed. Doc, thank and you course, for, for talking to us. And of course, pensions as well. Hopefully, we can talk to you again as the matters proceed. That's all we have time for for tonight's edition of The Point of View. My guest is the economist and the secretary general of the Trade Union Congress, Dr. Anthony Alba, who says we don't go greedy anymore. <laughs> Coming up next is the business dashboard. Stay with us.